47 countries removed from the red list and one of the biggest reopenings of foreign travel since the pandemic began. There's now just seven countries. The good news continues with another headline. PCR tests for travellers ditched before half term. Families saving hundreds of pounds. The good news just keeps on coming. But there are still some questions. And the man with all the answers is Conservative MP and Transport Secretary Grant Shapps, who joins me now. Briefly, I know it's important that you get the announcement out. Talk about some of the most popular destinations, if you would, Secretary of State, that are now back on the list. And we better hear about the ones that are still red flagged. Good morning to you. Good morning. Probably easier if I do it the other way around, actually, Nick. <laughs> there are now only seven on the uh, red list. They are Colombia, Dominican Republic, Ecuador... Haiti, Panama, Peru and Venezuela. And if you're going anywhere else in the world, the world is open um, to you and uh, vice versa. People to come here if you are fully vaccinated. And that is the key here, that full vaccination gets you the simpler tests when you come back. Uh, That's lateral flow. Day two. That's it. Job done. Uh, Rather than PCR tests and the rest of it. So that is the route to simplification. There was a suggestion earlier in the week, and I I have to put it to you that even the chief executive of Thomas Cook is not quite clear of this yet. There was a suggestion that upon my return from Acapulco, wherever it might be, I have to video myself doing my what's known as a lat flow. Is that correct, Secretary of State? You will will not have to video uh, yourself, in in fact, is the answer. Uh, My colleagues over at the Department of Health are going to uh, set this out in more detail. Uh, What they're going to ask for is a photo of the uh, lateral flow cassette. That's the thing where you get the ah. result uh, on it uh, as uh, a, 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 a sort of uh, evidence, as it were. So very simple, quick snap, done. And actually, um, th- there'll be other options. For example, talking to Heathrow uh, last night, uh, they've got testing available on site. So some people may come through, choose to get their lateral flow as they come through the terminal. Um, result, job done, nothing else to do. Uh, you know, because you can take that up to day two. It doesn't have to be on day two. Okay, and noting, you know, times are tough. It's still £25, roughly £25. But the price we're hoping will be about £25, which is a, a considerable saving on £75, £90 that we were looking at, yeah. Secretary of State. Yeah. Oh, look, I, I, mean, I hope they'll come right down because actually this is very straightforward with the lateral flows. doesn't have to go off to a lab. doesn't need somebody to process it at the other end. Uh, so very much more straightforward. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, I hope it will bring... You know, much joy to people actually being able to reunite with families and friends, do businesses, business abroad. Yeah. There's something else we're doing as well, actually, which is to uh, extend the inbound vaccinations to arrivals from another 37 countries. So large parts of the world, we are recognising their double vaccination, full vaccination programmes. Uh, that will be great for tourism back in the UK as well. So so good in, in both directions. Ha- travel saved for half term, Secretary of State, is that fair to say? I, I know that my colleagues over at the Department of Health uh, and actually at the Home Office, because this involves border force as well with the passenger locator form, are working very hard on implementing this as quickly as possible, ideally with the half term in mind so that people can travel without so much hassle. Of course, one other thing to mention is already you no longer need to take a pre-departure test before you come to the UK. So we're not asking people to do that test a couple of days in advance anymore so there's less hassle whilst you're abroad and hopefully you can enjoy yourself more as a result i'm not going to miss a french girl stuffing a cotton swab up my nose i'm not going to lie secretary say that wasn't (laughs) one of my most pleasant experiences when i was over so in terms of transport mr shapps is the pandemic over well um i think that we are moving to if you like a steady state uh where uh we all know about the pandemic i hope over the years it, it will become uh, endemic rather than pandemic. I'm not sure that we're ever going to be rid of coronavirus entirely, but just like a cold or flu or other things, it's something that we all live with. Uh, we know that in our cases, um, people will be invited to come forward for a booster jab. Over 50s, for example, uh, will get a booster jab, those who are vulnerable. And so we'll always keep a very close eye on it. And on that today, actually, the big the big pr- push today is to remind people to get their flu jabs because ah. flu is very likely to be back this year. Last year, there wasn't much socialising, so it didn't get a, a look in. Uh, that means that people won't have quite so much protection naturally. And we need people to come forward for their flu jabs when called. 40 million people will be called up for those this year. Please respond when you're asked. Come back to matters here in the UK, but matters that affect transport. You might not be aware, in fairness to you, because it's broken within the last half an hour or so. 
Insulate Britain are out and about again. They're at the Waltham Abbey junction of the M25. They're also at the very busy Old Street roundabout in East London, which you probably know or you'll certainly uh, certainly know of, not least as you get to your constituency, actually noting where you are. You probably use that a few times driving out of London. Um, I thought these irresponsible crosses were going to be locked up, Secretary of State. In yeah, fact, I was told that this week. Why not? It is absolutely wrong for people to do this. It's dangerous. It's really uh, outrageous. And actually, ironically, it probably adds to pollution as cars idle waiting uh, for their nonsense to, to for them to be unglued from the road. Um, so, you know, uh, we have... Uh, we heard, respectfully, we heard the, that on Tuesday and Wednesday yeah. from your colleagues and your boss, your colleague, the Home yeah. Secretary, and your boss, but <laughs> they're out again. So, so let, me, let me tell you the situation. Okay, so... The existing laws need toughening up uh, to get these glued falls off the road, and the Home Secretary has said she will do that in the Crime and Sentencing Policing Bill that's going through Parliament. In the meantime... I have been pl- applying uh, actively for court injunctions, uh, which cover the national highway network around London, around the southeast. Now, uh, these people can go to jail for what they're doing. I very much uh, imagine that the courts will take very dimly of the view that they're ignoring uh, a court injunction. Uh, it can be unlimited fines. It can be uh, six months in jail. We have been actively serving door to door. Uh, individuals over a hundred have been served, uh, and I think we'll start to see the courts uh, take a very, very dim view uh, and lock some of these people up. It is unacceptable. Uh, I should say that uh, the the old street uh, element of this uh, will be, uh, I think, transport for London. So I will be speaking to them and asking them to uh, take similar action. Uh, and on the national roads, when, the, the, yeah, the motorways, etc., uh, the that that action's already been taken. So they are breaching the law, and they can go to jail. And I look to the police and the courts to act. But when will that happen? I, I, I have to say. I think a lot of my listeners would say, well, we have, without being personal, you, I've heard all of this before. No. When am I actually going to see some of these people dealt with by the court? When is someone actually going to yeah. go down, is what I sense some well, of my listeners well, would say Well, look, fortunately, in this country, we do have a separation between... Yes, indeed, you know, of course. What the, yeah. Yeah. What, what the representatives of the people, i.e. politicians, ministers say, and what the courts do, that is up to the courts. They will be uh, in contempt of court. And courts, typically, uh, judges, do not like to see themselves being ignored. The High Court has put this injunction in place. Uh, I will expect I would expect they would want to act pretty firmly off that basis. I can't speak for the courts. I can tell you uh, that those injunctions uh, may well have been breached and people may be going to prison as a result. All right. As a senior member of the government, a couple of other questions while I have the benefit on the line. Um, you will be aware, I'm sure, Saudi Arabia looks like it's going to be buying the Newcastle United Football Club. Uh, is this part of levelling up? Well, look, I mean... Uh, Clearly, first of all, these things are are a matter for the Premier League and Newcastle United. Having said that, uh, they have to pass quite a strict test called the owners and directors test uh, before they can uh, do this. That has been uh, carried out. And in this case, I think that the uh, Saudi state, the, the, the country, has been separated from the organisation, the company that will run it. Um, any lingering doubts? Well, Tracy Crouch, who is former sports minister, she's actually an FA coach, qualified FA coach. She's carrying out a football review uh, into the financial ownership uh, and uh, the, the way that football is, is organised and run. And, and I'm sure she will be a t- paying great attention to uh, what's happening. I did notice that the fans in Newcastle, when I saw her on the news last night, were pretty much delighted and celebrating as if they just won the FA Cup. But... But given that uh, the involvement with the killing of Jamal Khashoggi, given the fact that Southeast Asian workers are used as slaves in Saudi Arabia, Shia Muslims are locked up or strung up on a whim, women's football doesn't even exist and various others. I appreciate that we have the Saudi Arabian Foundation, but it's part of Saudi Arabia. There's no point Newcastle United players taking the knee now, is there? That would be a farce. Well, look, I, 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 I'll leave this to Newcastle United and Premier League other than to say they have to have passed this owners and directors test. That means there has to have been a separation between the Saudi state and all those uh, bad things that you were just talking about and the ownership of this football club and, uh, and certainly the directing uh, of it. Uh, and, and, and secondly, as I say, government does take this seriously, which is why Tracy Crouch is carrying out this review into the way that football clubs are owned 
uh, how their finance finances uh, operate, and in effect, actually taking into all the, into account all the questions that you're actually asking me this morning. I think that's uh, right. The, the right way for the government to approach this. Lastly, you'll be aware your constituents and people up and down the country are very concerned about what's being called the energy crisis. There are some energy firms that sadly have collapsed, and jobs have gone with them, which is something we must all mourn. But the prices seem to be escalating. Is this all the work of Vladimir Putin, the Iron Man of Russia? Well, look, I think the world has woken up from its slumber of coronavirus and uh, a lot of economies have picked up faster, very fast, and none more so than the UK, where we have the, sort of the fastest growing uh, economy of any in the G7, the, the largest economies in the world. Um, and in doing so, there's suddenly massive demand on all sorts of raw materials and gas included. Um, in the United Kingdom, we have over, I think, uh, around 50 percent of our gas production is actually domestic. Uh, the, a lot of the rest comes from places like Norway, who've said that they will be increasing their supply uh, to us. And I think only three percent from Russia. So we're not directly impacted by Russia, but indirectly through wholesale gas prices globally of course that has an impact and that's where we have things like uh the uh, the the the, the uh, insurance that uh, gas prices can't rise by anywhere near the 250 percent that gas prices have actually ri risen on the international markets yes we've seen some uk uh, uh supply companies go bust about eight go bust every year in any case people are moved you won't uh, just to reassure your listeners you will not find you are not able to get gas you will automatically be switched to another uh, provider uh, and that happens as a guarantee so there's no issue for individuals not getting their gas of course we are all conscious that gas prices have have risen and that does have an impact all right last three words lock them up that's what we want to see secretary of state let's get those protesters off the road and locked up i'm grateful for your time thank you grant shaft transport secretary appearing here on lbc where the time is one minute after nine thomas watts has the news on your radio on Global Player and Play LBC. Leading Britain's conversation. This is LBC.